Okay, so this stuff is my secret weapon against cabbage loopers. This is Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. Uh, that is a powder that I use and I mix it up. I just put a little bit of it and mix it with water in this spray bottle and then I'm gonna go spray it on my cabbage plants and my brassicas that are getting devoured by cabbage loopers right now. Get it, Benj, get it. She's hot on the trail of a rabbit. She makes that noise when she's close to a rabbit. Here are my brassicas here, and there's some more over there, cabbages and uh, cauliflower and some broccoli. These are the ones, some of these are ones that survived the rabbit damage that I got initially. Only like maybe a couple of them in this bed here are. And then I got replanted um, some starts of cauliflower that they had at the local Mennonite store, Zimmerman's. Uh, I really didn't have a choice. I had to buy some plants because the rabbits ate all the ones that I started from seed. But you can see um, first rabbits, then moles, uh, undermining, you know, digging holes and tunnels underneath all my plants. A lot of them died and wilted. And uh, now a, a third wave of pests that I have to deal with, which is the cabbage looper. You can see the cabbage looper damage here on this plant. They just devour these leaves and you should be able to find the looper somewhere on here. There's probably a big uh, cat caterpillar on these plants somewhere that's doing this damage. Oh yeah, here's one. Get right there. These babies, they get much bigger than this. But when you spray this BT on these plants, they ingest it, there's another one. And then it's basically the bacteria eats away their stomachs and their innards from the inside and they, within a couple of days, they all are killed. And this is the same stuff that Monsanto, which is now Bayer, because Monsanto got bought out by the other biggest um, seed company and uh, biotech company in the world, pharmaceutical company as well. Um, Anyways, Monsanto puts, put this into uh, corn and other plants so that it was basically in the environment 24-7 so that these pests can be exposed to it and they can very quickly adapt to it. Through genetic engineering, they are injecting these Bt into their crops and then uh, that basically makes it ineffective for us organic farmers who just use it. I spray this one day every couple of weeks and basically on cabbages, I only have to do it until the cabbage forms a head, and then I stop. With the broccoli and the cauliflower, you have to continue to do it to keep them from eating the plant. But it's still only every couple weeks, or if it rains, you might have to spray it after, uh, after a rain because it will wash off the, the bacteria. But um, basically, it just seems to knock them back for a couple of weeks, and then you're fine. And we'll see how it works. I'll show you how it works right now. This is all you need to do is just like wet the plant. And because this has the bacteria in it, dissolved in it, it will survive on the plant and it will get into these caterpillars and kill them. So that was a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon I mixed into this about a cup of water if that and that will save my plants from the cabbage loopers for a couple of weeks all right well it's 
a few days later and I can clearly see like on here there's a dead cabbage looper. See that little sort of empty husk of a cabbage looper right there. So what happens to them, they just kind of shrivel up and die. There's some other ones that are dead on the backside. There's, there's eggs, newly laid eggs for future caterpillars, but you can kind of see that what was devastation and little bits of poop from these cabbage loopers. Now there's a couple more dead ones. Are now just dead cabbage loopers. You can see a couple more dead ones right there in those leaves. And hopefully this kind of damage will stop now and the new growth will be whole leaves and not leaves riddled with holes. Well, I've been watching the one honeyberry that formed on this shrub here and it fell off without my noticing. I guess they must ripen before this time because they are kind of shriveled up and looks it looks very ripe. So we're gonna see what it tastes like. Hmm. Wow. That's really tasty. That's much better than I thought it would be. It's kind of like a combination of a grape and a blueberry, maybe. Hmm. That's good. Now I just need it to be loaded with fruit because one tiny little fruit is not enough. <laughs> All right, well, please subscribe to my channel and share and like the video, and I'll see you next time.